there. Demand for COVID-19 vaccine is now growing super fast, supported by changing consumer attitudes. The increasing number of vaccine seekers have strained the vaccination rollout program in many countries. Globally, over 649 doses had been administered by last week, according to our world data. In another recent video, we looked at the slow start in the uptick of COVID-19 vaccine and showed you how more and more people will be getting the jab as time goes on. And this is based on the new product, Adoption Curve. This is already happening. I'm Catherine Gaho from SBO Research. Thank you for tuning into my channel, Elevators, where we seek to offer elevating and empowering messages. In this video, I talk about the growing demand for COVID-19 vaccines and the reasons why our attitudes have a powerful impact on our decisions to get the vaccination. The COVID-19 pandemic has been marked by intriguing twists and turns. In the early stages in 2020, we expected to get back to normal in a few months. And now more than a year later, we are still in a crisis. The message of the vaccine rollout represents a beacon of hope. But uh, apparently, we are still in the thick of a crisis. Just as people were celebrating the arrival of the vaccines and expecting things to get back to near normal, we started hearing that we've been hit by a third wave. Again, there's talk about even more deadly variants in the center of the pandemic narrative. And this has provided the logic behind the recent shutdown in several places. The news of speedy vaccine rollout appears to be the only hope for getting us back to a near normal life again. But this will depend on people's attitudes and the speed at which they take up the vaccine. Now, Attitudes seem to be changing fast. In the early stages of the vaccine program, some businesses such as supermarkets and restaurants, especially in the Western world, were offering incentives to encourage their staff to be vaccinated early. That is in order to overcome the wait and see attitude that was common at the offset of the vaccination program. Some workers were offered hours of paid leave, others got free transport, while some companies were offering cash incentives to take the COVID-19 vaccine. Here in Kenya, here in Kenya, seeing the president and the first lady, as well as the cabinet secretary for health, taking the injection in front of cameras appears to have shifted attitudes quickly. And the doubtful Thomas's mindset that had set the vaccine uptake to a slow start seems to have changed. In the starting phase, media headlines were talking about the slow uptick using words like hesitancy, slow, and the like. That is no longer the case. Recent reports indicate that the COVID-19 vaccine demand is increasing tremendously, especially here in Kenya, and I believe elsewhere as well. And this is particularly among the pre-qualified groups that the government has given priority for receiving the vaccine. That's people like the frontline health workers, the essential staff, as well as other workers who interact with a lot of people, such as teachers and security personnel. And recently, they've added the people above 58 years. And this list is going to keep changing and increasing the number of those who will be prioritized. This is expected to lead to even greater demand and longer queues. I've had debates on some radio channels here in Kenya where people are proposing the groups that should be next on the priority list. Some have suggested that matatos or public transport drivers and conductors should be considered next because of their high interaction with a lot of people, which means that they can be super spreaders of the coronavirus. Imagine a conductor standing in one spot, shouting, calling people to get into his vehicle and how many people he's interacting with closely. Then they have to drive in the same vehicle for a period. I can get their point. Others say that the next list should include Uber drivers, 
restaurant workers, and so on. So people have a lot of opinions about who should come next. That's an interesting debate because at the very early stages, that was not the debate. The debate was about, will you take it, will you not, and that kind of thing. So attitudes appear to be changing fast. I've also noticed that queues for the vaccine and the waiting time are getting longer. Actually, some of the queues are not visible because they are happening online, but uh, those hospitals which are booking for vaccination online have created a schedule where people book within slots of one hour for several people. And so the people who want to book select their preferred slots based on availability. This is a case like with Nairobi Hospital. And what I noticed last week is that the slots are filling very quickly. And therefore, the waiting time to get the job is getting longer with time. That confirms that the attitude is changing fast. Research shows that attitudes impact new product adoption in an important way. And in this case, COVID-19 vaccine uptake. They uh, impact it in three ways, through three factors, based on the key components of attitude. First is awareness. This relates to the information or knowledge and perceptions that people have about the vaccines. The information that people have comes from various sources, whether it's from the World Health Organization, Ministry of Health Leaders, the media, medical experts, religious leaders, educators, and social media, and, and many others. This information and the resulting perceptions usually take the form of beliefs. And as we know, different people, as of now, hold various beliefs about the COVID-19 vaccine. What are your beliefs? What beliefs do you hold as of now? These beliefs have to do with the questions that people are asking about the vaccines. And that's why they're seeking clarification. They're asking questions like, what are the likely side effects? How does the vaccine work? Will it mean that I won't wear a mask after I have the vaccine? That they're asking, how many doses do I need to take? What's the gap between the doses? They're also asking, what is the difference between the various vaccines of AstraZeneca, Moderna, Sputnik, and Pfizer? They're asking which is the vaccine available in Kenya? Which vaccine can I take? Where can I take it? Do I need to pay? How much do I pay? Those are the kind of questions that are in the minds of people. So the responses to these questions then will help shift the beliefs that they hold. And generally, you know that the beliefs you hold determine the decisions you make. And so the beliefs people hold about the vaccine will determine the decisions they make about whether to take the vaccine, when to take the vaccine, you know, where to take it, and stuff like that. The health officials need to ensure that people who are targeted with the vaccine have answers to the most commonly asked questions. It needs to be localized, that information. Second is feelings and emotions. This relates to an individual's feelings and emotions about the vaccine. This factor is more about an individual's evaluation based on the information they have. This is a major component of attitude that influences the decision to take action. This evaluation can be favorable or unfavorable towards the vaccine. And that is the person can see the vaccines as good or bad. And this perspective will then determine the kind of decision they make, whether to get or not get the vaccine. In actual fact, people are having even attitudes, you know, about the location where to take the vaccine. So they think if I get from this source or the other source and the like. So there is that kind of question of trust under this concern regarding the feelings and emotions. The third factor is the action tendency, which in consumer behavior we call the cognitive factor. Now this this, this aspect represents the likelihood to behave or act in a certain way in relationship to the vaccine. In this case, it reflects how an individual is likely to act in terms of going for the vaccine or not at all. And even it can also determine when the speed of adoption. This aspect also relates to the likelihood to get the vaccine within the next week or within the next month, 
or to wait even longer and see how other people take it. The other day a young man told me that he thinks that he should wait first for all the older people, especially his parents, to take the vaccine so that by the time he takes, he has not denied any of his older relatives a chance. Interesting, a caring young man. In consumer research, this factor of action tendency would be assessed with a question about the likelihood to get the jab or not, and how soon that would happen. This question can be used to measure expression of intention to act. To get your likelihood to get the vaccine soon, uh, you can respond to this question. How likely are you to get the COVID-19 vaccination within the next one month? Would you? One, very likely. Two, likely. Three, unlikely. Four, very unlikely. Or five, not sure. See, very easy. And this would sort of express the likelihood that you will take the vaccine within that one month period. And the person who says very likely is most likely to take it in the earliest weeks of the month. Very easy. All that is dependent on the information you have, the information you have gathered, and the beliefs you hold, as well as your feelings about getting the vaccine. That determines your decision and your action. So the three factors to consider in assessing the attitudes towards COVID-19 vaccines are first, awareness, that is what people know. Second, feelings and emotions, that is what they feel. And third, you consider action to get the vaccine. To learn more about COVID-19 vaccines, and get your questions answered, go to the World Health Organization website or check the resources from your country's health ministry. Thank you for staying with me. Do like this video and share it with two or more people who you think will benefit from it. Thank you and best wishes. We all need to elevate our mindset at this time.